Um, hi there, Mr. Hoskson. I actually have a very hard question for you. And um, how do we stop child porn from being on Web 2.0? Uh, the same way that the internet stops child porn, you don't. <laughs> you know, um, this is what people always do with these open systems. They say, well, we love all the openness. We love all the freedom. We love all the creativity. But there's this very particular area of use of the system that I uh, that is obviously really bad. Well, sure, you know, it's bad for terrorists to communicate. It's terrible for child pornography. It's terrible for all kinds of things. It's terrible when people get doxxed online. And their personal information gets leaked and then somebody goes and shoots them or kills them. It's terrible when people use the Internet to plot to do violence or crimes with people. The vast majority of crimes now, uh, the Internet is used in the facilitation of that. So you could ask the question, how do you use Google Maps to avoid having burglars search for someone's home? So it's 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 not easy. And, you know, you could, of course, try to build a governance layer over the entire system massive governance layer in which case you know everything from everyone all the time future police if you even have the intent to, to commit a crime we know so much that we're going to show up at your house and say hey you were thinking about doing this you're under arrest but that's just not the world we'd like to live in because that's a police state so what you do is you you have to build a web of enforcement so part of that is community curation so just because The protocols are open. It doesn't mean that the communities and platforms built on those protocols have to be completely open. This is a debate that comes up all the time with censorship. So if you know you have a particular member of your community who's hyper disruptive or doing things that you consider to be abusive behavior, and that you, what you brought up is an extreme example of that, uh, then that community should have the right to deplatform that member. The problem with the platforming with the way it's being done right now is there is a small oligarchy that controls the flow of almost all information and they coordinate. And when they deplatform, what they do is they deplatform you universally from everything. And then they don't even let you compete with them. They said, well, if you don't like Twitter, create your own Twitter. And that's what people did with Parler. And the minute that they created it and started pushing it, the Parler itself got deplatformed from the tech oligarchy. Uh, they they went, went ahead and, you know, deplatformed them from Amazon Web Services, knocked them out of the App Store. They did all kinds of stuff to deplatform the service. So so they're talking out of both sides of their mouth, like you can freely compete with us, and that's why we shouldn't be regulated as utilities. But then on the other side of their mouth, they're saying, well, we can coordinate as a trust. With, like That's the whole reason the Sherman Antitrust Act was passed, to basically decide who gets to participate in this market or not. So in that case, the platforming is wrong because they have decided to take the custodial interest of being a public utility. But in the case of a private club or group or actor, it's perfectly fine to have community standards and curation. So that's one layer of defeating that problem. The other is enforcement. These artifacts leave evidence, evidence that the FBI and other law enforcement agencies can hook onto, and then they can use that to find the perpetrators of these crimes. And so if you think about this, you'd say, well, from one perspective, the existence and proliferation of these things may create enough of awareness and notoriety that there's a higher probability of catching the people who made the movies. Whereas if they were just transmitted on flash drives in secret circles, law enforcement would never see it, never know it, and they'd never be in a position to be able to in, uh, actually take down the people who make this and know the people who consume this. So it's, you know, it's a complicated question, but you can't argue a particular to a general where you say, because this extreme example exists, that everything in the platform is wrong. And the obvious solution is to have a custodian basically totally regulate all conduct on the protocol. Because then what's the point of decentralization then? It's not. It's, it's completely centralized, the whims and wills of a single curator. And you of all people will be the one who's most unhappy with that. Because the minute that the curator decides not to do the things, you go from, I can at least go to a different system, to I have no options, I have no choice, I'm locked into this decision-making thing, I can't do anything. That's why Bitcoin exists with money. We could not opt out of the legacy banking system. So many people were blatantly disgusted after 2008 and all the horrible things that happened there, but you couldn't exactly just go take all your money out of the bank and participate in the digital economy. They had a gun to our head. They're basically like, well, yeah, we fucked you, but what are you going to do? 
can't change anything. You just got to deal with it. Take it. And so then we went and built our own money. And then what we did is say, well, you know what? We can just choose Plan Orange. We can opt out. We can leave the system. And, and that the only reason we can do that is because it's an open protocol. And the only reason we believe it's going to be around and survive and not get corrupted and co-opted is because it's an open protocol. You see? And if you try to do it the other way, you just run into the exact same problem. It ends up being taken over. It ends up being curated out of existence. And then you end up with an oligarchy that controls it.